In this week, I'm finally going to defy the major calculation tool for the course, the matrix. Vectors may have been familiar to many of you, but matrices are likely new to most of you. In this video, I just want to set the terminology and the notation. I'll not yet be talking about what matrices are for, that will follow shortly. So what is a matrix? Well, it's a finite two-dimensional box of numbers. For the computing scientists, it's a two-index array. And that's the entire definition. Everything else about matrices will be their use and interpretation, but for now, it's just a box of numbers. There are two standard notations for this box, one with curved parentheses and one with square brackets. In this course, I'll use the first notation, though other courses and text often use the second. As I said in the assignment guidelines, I do expect you to follow my notational conventions for the assignments, so please write your matrices with curved parentheses, not square brackets. A matrix has some number of rows and columns. This one has three rows and two columns. To refer to this, I sometimes state the size, saying that this is a three by two matrix. When I say number by number, the first number is always the number of rows, and the second number is always the number of columns. The numbers in the matrix here are integers, and most of our examples will be full of integers, but the numbers can be anything. Integers, fractions, irrationals, even complex numbers, though there are very few of those in this course. If I want to write a general matrix, an arbitrary array, I do it this way. Each of the numbers has two indices in the subscript. The first index is the row, and the second index is the column. So A subscript 2, 1 is in the second row and the first column. There are n rows and n m columns. Having a general notation is good for proofs and definitions. You saw this in all the vector proofs, where I wrote a vector in general form to make a general proof. Now I want to specify some particular kinds of matrices and the names I will use for them in this course. A matrix is square if it has the same number of rows and columns. This is a square 3x3 three three matrix, and then this is a square 5x5 five five matrix. A matrix that only has zeros on it, in it is called the zero matrix, and there is a unique zero matrix for every size. This is the 3x2 zero matrix, and this is the 6x6 zero matrix. If I draw a line from the top left of a matrix to the bottom right, this line is called the diagonal of the matrix. Entries that are on the diagonal are called diagonal entries. In the first matrix here, 5 and 2 are the diagonal entries. In the second, 1, negative 4, 8, and 0 are the diagonal entries. There is a unique square matrix in every dimension where the diagonal entries are 1 and everything else is 0. These matrices, one for each square size, are called identity matrices. So this is the 2x2 two two identity matrix, and this is the 3x3 three three identity matrix. Sometimes it is useful to put a subdivision into a matrix. A matrix with such a division is called an extended matrix. And here is an example with the division between the third and the fourth rows. There are some nice notations for sets of matrices. I'll use these to refer to matrices in general, so let me go over them. The set of all matrices of a particular size, say n by m, is written uppercase m with the subscripts n and m, and the number set in brackets. The number set shows what kind of numbers are in the matrix. In this case, the matrix has real numbers as its entries. If I only want square matrix matrices, then I just use one subscript. This is indicated by n by n square matrices, and again, the number set here is the real numbers. If I want a different number set in the matrix, then I replace R with some other number set S. For example, this symbol represents the set of all square n by n matrices with integer entries, and this one the same with rational entries. That's it for the initial terminology. In the next video, we'll move on with the actual uses and interpretations for matrices.